Good evening, brethren. Welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. Praise the Lord. Tonight we're going to be looking in the book of Romans. Our text is taken from Romans chapter 1, verses 15. And our theme is, I am ready. Praise the Lord. Before we dive into the word of God, let us just pray. Eternal and lovely Father, we thank you for yet another Wednesday night Bible study. Father, I pray right now that you touch your people in a mighty way. Father, oh God, you touch the hearts, God, to be receptive to your word, God. I pray, God, as this word, oh God, is divided, God, that it, oh God, may stir up, oh God, your believers, God, that, that your word, God, may, oh God, be able to uh, be hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against you, God. Father, I pray, O oh God, most of all, God, that we be able to, O oh God, be, O oh God, encourage God to spread the word, God, O oh God, as part of our command, God. Father, touch us even now, God. I pray that self be decreased. I pray that you be increased on my life right now. Father, I ask this mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I want to take this opportunity to thank our beloved pastor, Pastor Michael Bacchus, for giving me another opportunity to share the word of God. Praise the Lord. It's always a privilege to share this word of God among believers. And brethren, I know we have a, a duty and a command to Get this word to the unbelievers. Praise the Lord. So I pray that God may help me. Praise God. So again, our scripture, our text is Romans chapter 1 verses 15. Praise the Lord. And it says, So uh, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Praise the Lord. We know this book of Romans is one of the epistles, a letter that was written by Paul the Apostle to the church, churches in Rome. And at the time when Paul wrote this epistle, he was um, in current Greece. He was in current Greece and on his third missionary uh, journey. And one of the reasons um, in writing this epistle, he expressed his longing to visit the people there in, uh, in Rome. In fact, he heard so much that they were, you know, spreading the word of God, you know, in Rome. And I'm yet to discover who actually started the church in Rome. Uh, but what I know is that Paul was excited to meet with the believers there. And he said, I am ready. Praise the Lord. Now, what made Paul ready to share this word of God? Now, Paul was ready, first of all, because he had done the preparation. Paul was ready because he, he was a persecutor of the church. In fact, he did that as his daily job, uh, going around and uh, putting uh, Christians in prison and making sure some are sentenced to death. Uh, that was his job, and he did and, and he did his job with much diligence. And so, Paul, before having this conversion, he was ruthless in coming against the, the church, coming against the believers in Christ. Praise the Lord! And so, I'm going to pick it up from where Paul had this encounter with Jesus Christ. And it's 
we can see that in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 31. However, we no, we're not going to read the entire uh, 1 to 31. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 9. If you're following along, Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 31. Praise the Lord. And verse 1, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out, threatenings and slaughters against the disciple of the Lord went on to the high priest and desire of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this way whether they be men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined wrong about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he said, And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Praise the Lord. And as we know the story so well, uh, there was a man named Ananias, a servant of God, a man who was uh, devout. And God... Uh, came to Ananias and said to him, look, I need you to go to a certain house. You're going to see this man Saul. I need you to go and pray for him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias said, Lord, I heard about this man. This man is a bad man. This man has been persecuting the church, uh, putting people in prison and putting them to death. And Jesus said to him, Ananias, this man is my chosen vessel. I need you to go and to pray for him that he might receive his sight. And God said, he must know how much he must suffer for my sake. And the long story short, Ananias went and did just that. Paul regained his sight. Paul was uh, motivated to share the gospel. Paul went, um, you know, in the city, in certain synagogues, and tried to preach the gospel. But as it was, the religious people there, uh, they rose up against him. And they, you know, they said, what, this man? And they sought to kill him. And so uh, Paul men had to escape him out uh, out of the city, lower him in, they lower him down over the city wall in a basket. And Paul escaped from there. But nevertheless, Paul pledged and he was motivated to share this word of God. And he was motivated to share the word of God, not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles also. And so Paul went went his way and preaching the word of God, you know, as if, you know, there was no tomorrow. And the reason why Paul was so passionate about preaching the word of God is because Paul uh, was a persecutor of the church. In fact, Paul witnessed Stephen's death. First hand, Paul was there. And we're going to take a look at that quickly. Acts chapter 7, we're going to read from verses 55 to 60. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And verses 55 says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up, steadfastly to heaven and saw the glory of the of god 
and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and they stopped their ears, and ran up upon him with one accord, and they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes, their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen while calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Praise the Lord. Here we see Stephen being a man of God. Stephen being a sold out for God. He is a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And Stephen, even while facing uh, his death, while about to be on a death sentence, refused to denounce God. In fact, when Stephen was given his, his last statement, Stephen went through this long statement stemming uh, way back from Genesis with Abraham and the promises God made with Abraham. And he went through all the lineage and he got all the way up to David and to Jesus Christ who came through the lines of David. And Stephen said, you know what? This is what I believe. This is what happened with our forefathers. This is the good news. Christ is risen. And you know what? What really got those, uh, the people mad, uh, the high priests and all these religious folks and everybody who was in the trial, what really got them mad is what Stephen said in verse 56 of Acts chapter 7. And he said, And behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. What? They all, in one accord, they rushed Stephen and dragged him out. They, they were so mad, they dragged him out right away. They didn't wait for anything else. To the city, and they started to stone Stephen. But we saw that even while Stephen was about to die, he asked God not to hold this uh, sin against these people. He practically asked God to forgive them, just like Jesus did. Praise the Lord. So, what is this good news that Stephen really was eager to die for? What is this good news that Paul is so eager to share to share at, at all costs? You know, Paul in verse 16, he says, and I quote, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first, but also to the Gentiles. This gospel, this good news, what is this all about? Well, the good news is not only that Jesus Christ died on the cross, he rose again, he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. It is that. But it's also more it is the kingdom of God that God has made us heirs and joint heirs of the kingdom. It is the fact that God has provided this, this good news for us that we are kingdom citizens, that we can call upon him for whatever we need and he will hear and answer us. 
that you being a kingdom citizen, you have certain rights, certain rights as in the, the territory of heaven. Praise the Lord. This good news, first of all, Paul recognized that this good news is really true because he was willing to give his life for it, as we're going to see in a little later. So, Paul, I look at Paul was like a man driving a, a car at 120 miles an hour, and, he, and he's driving this car for so long, and suddenly he realized that he is going in the wrong direction and has to make a U-turn. And making that U-turn, Paul realized that not only does he have to continue driving fast, but he had a lot of ground to make up. And so Paul, he said to himself, he said, look, I am a debtor to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And he felt like he was a debtor to Jesus Christ, having persecuted the church of Christ and the people of God. Praise the Lord. And so, in so doing, Paul, writing this letter to the Jews, um, sorry, writing this letter to Rome and telling the believers there that He's eager to come to minister this word of God, to encourage them, to strengthen them. Paul, um, he said, I am ready. I am ready to pay the price. I'm ready at all costs. I am ready. And uh, there were a number of events that actually you know, held back uh, Paul from reaching to Rome. Uh, you know, Paul, his plan was to uh, travel, uh, you know, to Jerusalem first. Then he was to go to Spain where he was going to stop in Rome on his way there. And so, but Paul's plans was thwarted as the devil will always try to thwart your plan, believers. Paul, when he went to Jerusalem, you know that Paul fame in preaching the word uh, all over Corinth and Corinth and all, all, all the other places. Um, his fame went before him. And you know, when you're doing the work of God, not everybody's going to like you. There are some people who are going to hate you and sometimes to the bone. And so it was some of these uh, religious folks, they hated Paul. They stirred up all kinds of allegations against Paul and said Paul is blaspheming and he's coming against everything that the Jewish custom stands for. And they accused Paul of, of bringing a Gentile into the synagogue. And during those days, that was a capital crime. And so, uh, they, when Paul went there, they had Paul. Paul was stuck over there in Jerusalem for that period for um, maybe two years or thereabout. And Paul realized that, you know what? Even though these people don't have any evidence against me of doing anything, they're still not letting me go. And so Paul decided to appeal uh, to the to Rome, he decided to appeal to Caesar. Of course, Paul was a dual citizen. He was a Roman citizen, and he was also Jewish, and so he could have appealed to Caesar. And so, Paul, there's a number of things happening. Paul traveling to uh, to get to Rome. Um, you know, there was. Uh, shipwreck, there was a um, snake encountering, all kind of stuff happened, but you know what? The devil will try to deter you when you're uh, doing the will of God. But God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And so Paul, 
arrive in Rome. When Paul get to Rome, Paul was placed under house arrest. Paul, it means that Paul had to stay in his home for most of the times, and he had, an, he had a soldier appointed unto him to guard him 24-7. So wherever Paul went, that soldier was with him. And so we know that Paul, even in the, um, on the house arrest, decided, you know what? This is not going to stop me from sharing the gospel. This gospel has to be preached. And so Paul decided to write the prison epistles as, as they are known. Paul wrote, in that two years he was in uh, under house arrest, Paul wrote Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And those were sent yeah, those letters were sent out and minister and touch people and save people. So God, uh, Paul was still doing the work of God. And in fact, Paul preached the word of God to everyone that came to visit him. Everyone that came to visit him, he made sure he preached the word of God. He sent letters. He, he the word of God went forth by Paul uninhibited. Praise the Lord. So, what is this good news? Why was Paul willing to do whatever it takes to share this good news? First of all, Paul found the good news to be true. Here is it, you know, like you're being taught all the time that this particular thing is a lie. It's not right. It's not right. And you firmly believe that. And then only to have the thing proven right in front of your face. As he had that experience on the road to Damascus. And speaking directly to Jesus Christ, hearing his voice. He had no other choice but to let that word go and go forth. And um, he was willing to suffer for Christ's sake, regardless of what. But he was, was, his goal was to make the word rich, the wise, the unwise, the, the Jews, the Gentiles, the Greek, the barbarian. He was willing to spread the word of God by any means necessary. Praise the Lord. So I ask you today, as I ask myself, are you ready? Are you ready to share this good news of Jesus Christ? This good news of the kingdom of God, the kingdom life, kingdom citizen. This good news that you can go directly to the throne of grace and ask for forgiveness. This good news that you can call upon God and ask whatever you will and, and it shall be granted. Are you ready? Are you ready to pay the price that comes along with sharing the good news? Praise the Lord. You know, the good news... If you preach the good news or the gospel the way it should be preached, you are going to offend a lot of people in high places. You're going to tread on some dangerous grounds. You're going to upset the, the systems and the norms of society. But the converse is also true, is that if you preach the word of God the way it's supposed to be preached, you're going to reach souls. You're going to win souls for Christ. And you're going to build up your reward 
as Christ says, he that winneth soul is wise. Praise the Lord. And so, I urge you today, brethren, I urge you today, be like Paul. Be like Paul. Paul said in his words, he said, I know what I believe. These are Paul's words. He said, I am fully persuaded. Paul said, in towards the ending of his life, Paul said, I afford the good fight of faith. Paul said, he said, what can separate me from the love of God? He said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Brethren, this is a love worth fighting for. This is a good news worth sharing. Praise the Lord. Brethren, let's answer the call. Let's answer the command. It's not going to be easy, but God is going to be with us. He promised to be with us even to the end of the earth. And so, brethren, let's go forth and share this good news to everyone we meet. Brethren, I thank you tonight for listening. I trust that you'll be able to be encouraged and inspired by this word. I pray that you'll be able to share this word even as Paul was willing to give his life for this good news. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you because your word has gone forth, God. We pray, God, that even as your word has gone forth, it, it may encourage and inspire someone uh, to share your word and to bring the good news to people. Father, oh God, give them the strength and help them to say, as Paul did, I am ready, Father, Help us to be ready to share this word, this uncompromising word. Thank you, God, for ministering right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and running over. So you know what time it is? It's time for you to give. And in order to do that, all you need to do is go to our church's website. Go to www.fgany.org. That's www.fgany.org. And when you get to the webpage, all you have to do is click give and it will open up where you'd be able to pay your tithe, your offering, or give to any special ministry that you would normally give to. So don't forget, go to www.fgany.org and give.